This is OTRFM, part of the Ion Radio Network. Dot com. <laughs> Welcome, 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 everybody. Good evening. It's Matt Connerton Unleashed. We are live June 14th, 2016, a little bit after 11 p.m. in the Eastern Time Zone. Coming to you from the Uptown Auto Repair Studio in Manchester, New Hampshire. We're live on uh, IPM Nation 2 as we are five nights a week. And, of course, Tuesdays and Thursday nights, we have the honor and privilege of being carried also on OTRFM which is the premium channel on the Ohm Times radio network. And uh, there's also the television edition of Unleashed, which is now Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern. Had a pretty raucous uh, uh, show tonight. Uh, if you missed it, it'll, it'll be up on YouTube tomorrow. Don't worry. <laughs> we'll, get, we'll come back to that. But it, it was an energetic program. Had a pretty interesting caller. So um, welcome to the show. And, of course, uh, we are powered by Ambit Energy. If you want to learn how to save on your energy bills, you can go to ipmnation.ambitrabbit.com. You could be on your way to free energy. And we are sponsored by the Mortgage Specialists. So if you're in the market for a home, the biggest purchase you'll most likely ever make, you know, unless you're a billionaire like Trump and you're buying you know, large uh, buildings and slapping your name on them and yachts and things like that. But probably for most of us. A home is the biggest purchase you'll ever make. Go to the mortgage specialists.com because you don't have to go it alone. You can schedule an appointment with the great people there, the mortgage specialists.com. And uh, let's see. I do have a phone line open tonight, as I do every night. Uh, 617-917-4IPM. That's IPM as an IPM nation. 617-917-4476. You can call us. You can text us. You do both if you want. You could send a text to that number and say, hey, I'm going to call you in a minute. You ever have somebody do that? They'll text you and say, hey, I'm going to give you a call. It's like, well, why not just call me? But if you want to be one of those people who does that kind of thing, or if you want to, like, you know, send me a text and be like, hey, I was going to give you a call. Is now a good time? And then I can text you back and I can be like, well, you can, but... You'll be live on the air. Whether or not that's a good time is up to you. You know, if you're looking to have a private conversation, no, it's not a good time. You'll have to wait until midnight. And if you're waiting until midnight to have a private conversation with me, then quite frankly, not to judge, but you're probably up to no good. And uh, you're probably trying to sell me some some drugs or something. But... Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, so <laughs> let's see. Um, also, too, we have the chat room up at ipmnation.com slash live, too. You can also tweet me anytime at Matt Connerton, and you can post on the Matt Connerton Unleashed Facebook page. I hope you like the page, if you haven't already. And uh, you can even email me, matt at ipmnation.com. There's other pages you should like, too, like the IPM Nation Facebook page, I'd appreciate that. The Ohm Times Facebook page, you should give that a like. Um, just go through, just like all kinds of stuff that's uh, in one way or another uh, directly or tangentially uh, connected to this program, if you don't mind. Yeah, just take a minute to do that. I'm just giving out assignments tonight. That's going to be the entire show. I'm, just, I'm going to, I, I'm going to uh, for the next hour, just give you things to do so that listening to me just becomes a, a giant chore that you feel like you have to accomplish. Ah, maybe I won't do that. That doesn't sound like probably uh, very engaging radio. Uh, all right. Yeah, the more I'm thinking about it, that's probably not a great idea. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll go in a completely different direction then. Let's redirect, shall we? So, uh, so we had the television edition. And, and by the way, for, uh, for, I know we're always picking up new, new listeners and viewers. So for those who are new to the show who don't know, uh, up until... Relatively recently, the television edition of this show, which you can see every week on IPM Nation, and then we do, uh, you can see it live, and then we post it up on YouTube. But uh, that, until recently, was Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern. And we recently moved the show 
uh, via our television partner, MPTS, where we broadcast a TV show from, to, uh, let's see, um, Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern. Sorry, I got distracted by a Facebook message. Uh, Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. So, did the show tonight. And one of my hopes and dreams with the better time slot, because Tuesday at 7 is clearly better than Wednesday at 2, because Wednesday is at 2 o'clock. A lot of people are busy. So I figured, you know, we'll get more live viewers and probably get more callers and more social media activity and uh, definitely more callers. Uh, and uh, I had a, a, a caller tonight who was um, pretty – he never gave his name, and his voice sounded vaguely familiar. I think he might have called the show before, uh, but he was very – uh, upset because I said that, uh, you know, it, it, I'm going to vote. And, and the, part of why I'm talking about this is I want to clarify anyone who is watching the show or if you watch the show tomorrow or later in the week when we post it up on YouTube, I want to clarify something because I don't think the caller quite got it. And caller, if you're, if you're uh, listening, you know, feel free to, I don't know if you listen to the radio version of the show, but feel free to call in tonight. Um, There is a, uh, sorry, everybody. There's a strange hum coming from somewhere. I hear it in my headphones. Not sure what's causing that. And it went away. I think it was something outside. Yeah, I think it was something outside that was causing that. I apologize, everybody. I don't know if you can even hear that at home. That's never happened before here at the Uptown Auto Repair Studio. I have never heard that sound. It was like this this low hum, and it stopped. Okay, anywho, sorry about that. Uh, that's live radio. It's always an adventure. So I had said that because Trump seems to be becoming more and more insane... Because what kind of person, after a tragedy like what just happened in Orlando, goes on Twitter, goes on Facebook, and says things like, I appreciate all the congratulations for being right. Just bizarre. So I, I made the comment that, you know, I'm going to vote for Gary Johnson, the Libertarian nominee, just as I did in 2012, because I'm an independent. I try to vote against the two-party system at every opportunity. And I try to support independence because I think both the Republican and Democratic Party are uh, very bad for America. And uh, I just I want to kill the two party system. I want to rip it down and uh, get independents elected who don't uh, treat everything like a team sport. You know, us versus them, red versus blue, liberal versus conservative. I want to get I, I want to do away with all that. So, but I made a comment, and this is where I think the misunderstanding might have been, and I tried to clarify it with the caller, but he, he kind of interrupted me, although I, I was patient with him because I liked his, uh, even though I didn't agree with some of what he was saying, and he clearly uh, didn't agree with me, I, I liked his uh, spirit. So I enjoyed, I enjoyed his call, but, uh, you know, because obviously a, a show like this, you know, I want people to call in and disagree with me and debate me and argue with me. Uh, I, you know, uh, I think a, a bunch of people uh, sitting around agreeing with each other uh, is boring and pointless. A lot of conservative talk radio is that. You know, you've got a conservative host who has on conservative guests and they only take calls from conservative listeners and everyone sits around and agrees and it's a big conservative circle jerk, you know. So I, I like it when people call and disagree with me. So I enjoyed this gentleman's call, and I hope he calls again. But where the misunderstanding seemed to be was, you know, I made a comment that if I couldn't vote for a third-party candidate, if someone put a gun to my head in the, vo in the voting booth and said I had to pick Trump versus Hillary, as much as I dislike Hillary Clinton for a variety of reasons, you know, I think she's a liar, I think she's a sociopath, I think she's only out for herself, I think she's just purely driven by ambition, and I don't think she really cares about anybody. All kinds of reasons. I think she's, a, a, I think she's, a, she's bad. Um, but I don't think she's particularly crazy. Well, then again, if she's a sociopath, I, technically that may be considered crazy. But uh, in terms of uh, mental health. But, but I don't think she's crazy the way Trump is crazy. 
And so at this point, if someone held a gun to my head and said, you have to vote either Trump or Hillary, I would have to, as much as I would hate it, I would have to go with Hillary. Now, the caller didn't seem to understand, though. I'm, I'm not voting for Hillary in November. I'm voting for Gary Johnson. And I tried to make him understand that, but he kept saying, well, you just said you're voting for Hillary. I said, no. I said, if someone held a gun to my head and said I only had two choices, I would vote for Hillary. You know, and then he, he finally seemed to get it, but then he made a comment about, well, you're throwing your vote away if you vote for Gary Johnson, and, which I absolutely disagree with. Um, you have to vote your conscience. At least I think you should. And my conscience tells me vote for the libertarian nominee. Uh, so I'm voting for Gary Johnson. By the way, a lot of libertarians would critique that, believe it or not, because a lot of libertarians are not particularly enamored with Gary Johnson. But a lot of libertarians, you know, just like the, the two parties have become more polarized, both the Republicans and the Democrats, this attitude where you're either 100% with us or you're 100% against us, and you have to be, you know, if you're a Democrat, you have to be really far left, and if you're a Republican, you have to be really far right or they don't consider you a true member of the party. Um, I've noticed with libertarians, uh, uh, you know, I, I, this is not, not all libertarians, clearly, but some of the li libertarian programming, for example, that we carry on IPM Nation, there's very much an attitude of, if you're not an anarchist, uh, then you're not a true libertarian. So I just don't fit in anywhere. All right, here's what we're going to do, because uh, there's something else I promised on the television edition that we would get to tonight. I found a great article that I'm dying to dive into with all of you. We'll do some Trumpster diving. <laughs> we'll be back. Don't go away. The Real Conscious Connection. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. Matt Connerton here. Join Jen Coffee and I twice a week for Matt Connerton Unleashed, a political talk show that's a little different than what you're used to. No liberal or conservative agenda here, just an honest dialogue about truth and how things really work in the world of politics. Matt Connerton Unleashed, every Tuesday and Thursday night at 11 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio. Hello, I'm Miriam Knight of New Consciousness Review, inviting you to my new show where I interview the rising stars of the Conscious Awakening. We'll explore the many faces of consciousness and action and intriguing perspectives on life, the universe, and everything in between. Join us each Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern on the Rising Stars Show. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Good evening, everybody. Welcome back. Matt Connerton Unleashed. We're live. Before the break, I was discussing the uh, television edition of the show, which you can see Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern on IPM Nation. And uh, <coughs> something that, uh, excuse me, cleared my throat a little bit there, my allergies. God, the, seems like the, the pollen count just uh, continues to kick me in the sinuses um there was an article that i found really fascinating a blog on huff post by uh georges 
you Joe. I have no idea how to say this guy's last name. U G E U X. I don't know. I'm going to assume the X is silent. This actually went up yesterday. Um, it was on HuffPost, and here's what was what's fascinating about it and why I want to share it with all of you. Um, people have been looking at me lately like I'm nuts. I know that's surprising. Uh, no, let me explain. So people have been looking at me like I'm nuts because of my theory, and my theory is this. Uh, and I've been uh, saying this for a couple of weeks now because oh, I've always kind of wondered a little bit, but I'm now convinced uh, I firmly believe that Donald Trump does not want to be president and that he's intentionally trying to tank this election by seeing how outrageous he can get. Um, now, it hasn't mattered. The more outrageous he gets, it seems like the stronger he gets. He's like the, you know, he's like Godzilla wandering into the power lines. It just makes him stronger. But, uh, you know, some pretty ridiculous behavior, for example, as I mentioned before, you know, after what happened in Orlando, he goes on Twitter and he goes on Facebook and says things like, uh, I appreciate the congratulations for being right. Um, just crazy, politically tone deaf, insensitive things like that that he does and says. And it's just insanity. And it's alienated the hell out of uh, his own party. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen at the convention. but So I won't go through the whole – there's a whole – what I think is a very logical argument for why, uh, how I arrived at this conclusion that he's trying to tank it. I think, I think it's possible, you know, very early on, some people speculated that he was a plant by the Clintons. Um, and, uh, nobody's really saying that anymore, including me. I think it's possible that he's a plant by the Clintons, but I also think it's possible that he really just, I think he's a bored, rich guy who thought it would be fun as a lark to run for president, never expected to get this far. And now that he's actually the nominee, he's panicking. And just rather than pivoting to a general election strategy so that he can actually, you know, win in November, he's doing the opposite and just getting crazier and crazier. Um, it's also possible that none of it's intentional and that he actually is just, as I as I've been saying for a couple of weeks now, the least self-aware individual to ever run for president. And I do believe that it you don't have to have a psych degree to figure out Donald Trump absolutely uh, is afflicted with uh, some uh, sort of narcissistic personality disorder. I think that is incredibly obvious. Um, but, um, but my theory, of course, people are looking at me like I'm crazy when I tell them, I think he's intentionally trying to tank this. I don't think it's fun for him anymore. I think he's lost a lot of money, and I think he wants out. I don't think he wants to be president. You know, he just turned 70. I think he'd much rather just hang out and have fun and enjoy being a billionaire and uh, slapping his name on big buildings and whatnot. He does not. I don't think he wants to be president. What does he want to be president for? So, so this is met with great skepticism. But then I see this blog written by this gentleman whose name I can't pronounce, titled, Donald Trump Desperately Looks for an Exit Strategy. So this got my attention. I saw this and I thought, ah, a kindred spirit, someone who believes as I do. So let's, and I've not pre-read this, so let's see what this gentleman's case is for why he thinks uh, Trump is looking for an exit strategy. And uh, we'll see how closely it matches uh, the case that I've laid out, and I'm not going to lay out the whole case again. If you're new to the show or if you just missed where I've done that, uh, you can go back and check out old episodes. Uh, Ohm Times uh, does a great job of archiving episodes, and the episodes that aren't on Ohm Times, because some nights I'm only on IPM Nation, uh, we archive those at, uh, on the IPM Nation site, so you can find those there. But uh, so I don't want to go through the whole long explanation again as to how I arrived at the conclusion that I did. But let's let's check this out. Okay, it says here, as we are getting closer to Donald Trump's nomination, uh, his outrageous behavior has accelerated. He stated that he would not change if he were elected president, insulted the media who have blindly financed him for sake of reality TV, insulted Republican parliamentarians, refused to publish his tax returns, and recently defended a fake university that bears his name. He is being more outrageous every time he speaks. 
Last week, he disparaged a judge, a U.S. judge of Mexican ascent, who is a war hero and a respected magistrate. He accused him of a conflict of interest because he is building a wall. Um, so obviously, by the way, this article was written, you know, probably a, a couple of weeks ago. So this was before even these ridiculous uh, social media postings about the Islam- or Orlando shootings. Okay, and then it says, and this is a part where we definitely agree, narcissistic personality disorder is a serious mental health problem. It would be a grave mistake to consider Donald Trump stupid. He is intelligent, but displays many of the symptoms of narcissistic personality disorder. It can only be cured with long therapy and specific medication. The disease is described the following way by the American Psychiatric Association under the Disruptive Impulse Control and Conduct Disorders category, according to the Mayo Clinic. Okay, here's the list. Having an exaggerated sense of self-importance. Check. (laughs) Expecting to be recognized as superior even without achievements that warrant it. Exaggerating your achievements and talents. Being preoccupied with fantasies about success, power, brilliance, beauty, or the perfect mate. Believing that you are superior and can only be understood by or associate with equally special people. Taking advantage of others to get what you want. Having an ability or unwillingness, I'm sorry, having an inability or unwillingness to recognize the needs and feelings of others. Behaving in an arrogant or haughty manner. This perfect portray of Donald Trump's behavior and disruption. Uh, Although the narcissist may seem extremely confident, they often use an exaggerated sense of self and sense of entitlement to cover their deep feelings of insecurity. Did Donald Trump ever hope to be president? Stephanie uh, Siegelski, who worked for the Trump campaign, said that when she was brought aboard as communications director for the Make America Great Again PAC last summer, the instructions from Trump Tower were to make sure that Trump finished a respectable second in the GOP primary. It was made clear that Trump was running not as a serious contender, but as a protest candidate. Interesting. That's a very interesting tidbit of information, actually. Hmm. Comparing the various ventures that Donald Trump went through, I believe that he is fundamentally a gambler and a deal maker, not a strategist. From casinos to golf clubs and hotels, he succeeded in some and miserably failed in others. He is a risk calculator but a totally instinctive one. That makes him dangerous and unpredictable in a job where self-control is critical. Narcissists' emotions can turn on a dime. This volatility can cause constant stress in an organization. He came into the campaign as he came in to his TV shows, and the television immediately played with him as he played with them. They had a unique money-making showman. They gave him free exposure and made billions on advertisers. He was convinced that he would never last more than a few months against a formidable coalition of Republican candidates. In the beginning, he had a lot of fun in the show. He hates it now, but he will not be able to stop by himself the infernal machine he embarked on. He needs help. He is definitely in phase two of the narcissistic personality disorder. On top of that, his business interest starts to suffer. The fact that the PGA Golf Championship moved from his golf course in Florida to Mexico adds insult to injury. Next, facing the possibility of a loss is unbearable for a, quote, winner. Whether he outrages the Latinos, women, blacks, judges, the media, or others, and denies having outraged anybody, he shows a personality who believes that one word can erase the previous one. More importantly, he definitely does not want to win, otherwise he would be cajoling the electorate rather than aggressing it. Um, there's more, and I want to go through the rest of this, but this is a good stopping point because we're coming up to another break. But, um, this is, this, uh, the author of this article, uh, is laying out a pretty strong case similar to mine, uh, more articulately, however, uh, than, than I've made my case. But I am really stuck, by the way, I want to go back because we'll finish the article when we come back from break, but I want to go back to this paragraph under the heading, Did Donald Trump Ever Hope to Be President? Just really quickly, uh, this woman who worked for the Trump campaign said that when she was brought aboard, uh, the instructions from Trump Tower were to make sure that Trump finished a respectable second 
in the GOP primary, it was made clear that Trump was running not as a serious contender, but as a protest candidate. If what she's saying is true, uh, uh, if what she's saying is true, Stephanie uh, Segielski, uh, and uh, the, another name I'm, I'm pretty uncertain of, but hopefully I got that remotely correct. Stephanie, if you're listening, uh, <laughs> if that's true, that that one little tidbit of information that I've never heard or read before, if it's true, um, that is uh, a pretty key piece of information in terms of bolstering the case that I've laid out and the case that the author of this blog lays out. That is very, very interesting. So when we come back, we will finish this article, and then uh, uh, we got to do something from my favorite website, rightwingwatch.org. Uh, everyone's crazy uncle, that's right, Uncle Pat, Uncle Pat Robertson has uh, said, has, has actually, here, uh, here's a little teaser for you. He went so far in some of his comments regarding uh, the uh, folks who were gunned down in the shooting in Orlando at this, uh, this gay club, that the Christian Broadcasting Network actually uh, issued a statement trying to clarify <laughs> and, uh, and, and, I guess, uh, soften his remarks. So I thought that was pretty interesting. So we will get to that when we come back. And there's still time for your calls. 617-917-4476. More Unleashed coming up. Don't go away. We are live. The Real Conscious Connection. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. Hello, I'm Miriam Knight of New Consciousness Review, inviting you to my new show where I interview the rising stars of the Conscious Awakening. We'll explore the many faces of consciousness in action and intriguing perspectives on life, the universe, and everything in between. Join us each Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern on the Rising Stars Show. This is Terry Van Horn, and I want to invite you to join me for my weekly radio show, Hailing Light, on Own Times Radio, every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. On Hailing Light, we want to bring love, light, and blessings into your world. You can find out more about us at www.healinglightonline.com. Blessings. Are you trying to get from point A to point B and need a little advice? Connect with the counselors at Ohm Times Advisors. Whether you're looking for a life coach or a spiritual intuitive, the advisors participating at advisors.ohmtimes.com were carefully chosen based on their gifts, skills, and professionalism. Ohm Times Advisors, connecting you with the best advisors in the business. Welcome back, everybody. Matt Connerton Unleashed from the Uptown Auto Repair Studio. We are live. Well, it's all a matter of perspective, actually. We're live if you're listening live. You could be listening to the podcast version, in which case you're not listening live. I mean, it's not like I go back and edit out the part where I say it's live. 
So, you know, even if you're not listening live, you're still going to hear me saying we are live. But it's okay. You'll figure it out. I have faith in you. you, you you're going to go, hey, this isn't live. What's he talking about? He's crazy. So speaking of crazy, like I said, people have been looking at me like I'm crazy because of my theory about Trump. But let's get back to this article, this blog on HuffPost. that backs up my argument. A kindred spirit has written this article laying out his case for why Trump is not a serious presidential candidate and doesn't really want to win. Okay, the next part of this. The tide is turning. He is now facing the obvious. He is likely to be the Republican presidential candidate and lose the presidency. Since his entire life has been built on the illusion that he always wins, this nightmare scenario would be a devastating loss. He urgently needs an exit strategy that portrays him as a victim of the system. It should not be difficult to organize. Now is the moment to act. Donald Trump has reached the third and last phase of his narcissistic personality disorder, the discard phase. He is more vulnerable than he has ever been and is offering at least one opportunity a week to blow him up. The Republican Party has to recognize its mistake. Does, however, the GOP still exist? Has Trump kidnapped it? If he is the candidate, he could deliver the majority of the Senate and the House of Representatives to the Democrats, which, by the way, I predict will happen. Donald Trump or the Republican Party will collapse together. It is time to sacrifice a public danger for the sake of the country and of Donald J. Trump himself. In this phase, the narcissist then begins the task of extricating himself from the situation he put himself in. Trump is only now discovering that he will have to face Barack Obama and knows he cannot win against him. The despicable way he made him responsible for the Orlando Orlando carnage says it all. He lost his mind. The break can be quick, complete, and devastating. Once narcissists achieve their material or personal goals from the situation, they are ready to move on to the next one. They may forge it while still in the current one, feeling it is their right to do as they like. In any event, he does not care about his associates, his volunteers, and his electors. He only cares about himself. Donald Trump will do everything he can to avoid getting beaten in Cleveland. Let's find a way to engineer his exit strategy. Uh, Director for the Make America Great Again PAC last summer. uh, Oh, I'm sorry. Let's uh, go to the next paragraph because that paragraph doesn't belong there. Um, Something about the way this copied from the website. Uh, I got it from was uh, a little strange. Uh, Let's see. Comparing the various ventures that Donald Trump went through, I believe that he is fundamentally a gambler and a deal maker, not a strategist. Oh, I see. This is just, oh, I see what happened. Okay. It's just, uh, it doubled on the page. All right. So that was actually the end of the article. Let's help him find his exit strategy together. So there you have it. Someone else who believes as I do, Donald Trump really wants out. Okay, let's uh, go to my favorite website, rightwingwatch.org. But this one gets pretty uh, disgusting, actually. Uh, It's uh, Crazy Uncle Pat, Pat Robertson. This is what he has to say about Orlando, according to this article. He said that gays and Islamists are allies, so let them kill themselves. Uh, Today on the 700 Club, televangelist Pat Robertson reacted to the massacre at an Orlando gay club by making the absurd claim that liberal LGBT rights advocates have aligned themselves with radical Islamists and are now reaping what they have sowed. Well, here, let's just hear the, artic- the, the audio. There's actually two pieces of audio, but what's interesting, again, is what happened, and I misspoke earlier when I said it was the Christian Broadcasting Network. It was actually... There was actually a statement issued by the 700 Club. Um, Oh, I'm sorry. It is the Christian Broadcasting Network. That's the the, the CBR. I'm sorry. CBN carries the show. The 700 Club is the show, but the Christian Broadcasting Network is the one who released a statement clarifying uh, Crazy Uncle Pat's comments. But let's hear the the, the first uh, set of uh, (laughs) insanity here. One more time, I want to mention the fact that this is a religious belief. It is deeply ingrained in the people. And for when our president refuses to acknowledge it, when the Secretary of State, uh, now the 
Democratic uh, nominee for president uh, refuses to acknowledge and says that this is a slur against a, quote, great religion. This is nonsense. This is what this great religion teaches. And it's right in the warp and woof of Islam. So uh, whether you like it or not, that's the way it is. So the the left is having a dilemma of major proportions. And uh, I think for those of us who... Uh, uh, you know, disagree with some of their policies, the best thing to do is to sit uh, on the sidelines and let them kill themselves. That's the first audio. He's looking really, really old, by the way. How old is Pat Robertson? I mean, in theory, he should die soon, right? Let's see. Is this the same clip? Well, the oh, here's a longer story that I think it. you need to focus on today, ladies and gentlemen, is the dilemma of the liberals, the so-called progressives, because they have two favored groups. One, the Muslims. Number two, the homosexuals. And suddenly they're finding that the Muslims, in 10 Muslim nations, there is a death penalty for practicing homosexuality. And as I believe, reading a, a column by Hirsi Ali, uh, there are about 40 pro-Muslim countries where homosexuality is somehow against the law. So we're looking at a favored group by the left, the homosexuals, and that in Islam is punishable by death or imprisonment or some sanction. So what are the left going to do? How are they going to describe it? And they don't know quite what to do now. But the fact that this uh, homos- this uh, Islamic uh, uh, gentleman opens fire in a gay nightclub and kills almost 50 homosexuals, that says something. And it tells the fact that Islam is against homosexuality. So the liberals are going to be scrambling to find some rationale. And I think they're going to have a, a hard time doing it. In the meantime, Donald Trump is uh, riding high because he said we should screen these people, and he's absolutely right. We should screen them. And so the left is saying, oh, you're anti-Muslim, you, you, you're racist and all this. Suddenly, that part of it, the narrative doesn't play too well, and they're stuck as to what to do. But Trump is enjoying a victory, and if more of these things happen, every time it does, the president failed to work in Libya. He said he, the uh, Assad regime had to go. He didn't do it. He drew a red line. He, uh, he, he didn't uh, abide by that. He let Libya go into chaos. He was going to, quote, lead from behind. He has not taken a lead in, in dealing with ISIS, which he said, well, the tr- threat of today, the JV team, the threat of extreme Islam is, is gone. And because the world won't fit his narrative, he just is going to stay with the narrative. And I, I saw a column of a man named Brett Stevens who talked about... By the way, just to pause for a second, I'll give him this much credit. Some of that uh, criticism is, is valid. So I'll, I'll give him that. King Canute, who ordered the waves to stop coming in, actually had people whip the sea uh, to punish him. Okay, now he's just talking crazy again. Because it didn't obey him. Well, Obama is trying to whip the waves, and they won't obey him. They won't obey his narrative. Because radical Islam is in the religion of Islam. It is deeply embedded in the writing of Muhammad. It is in the Quran. It is the Hadith. You read carefully all that they have said. And in terms of homosexuality, uh, it's interesting uh, that uh, there's a man named D.H. Lawrence. You've probably heard about Lawrence, the Colonel Lawrence, a famous man in the, among the Arabs. He has a, uh, a description of a night that he spent uh, in the, I guess, captivity or as a guest of some sheik. And apparently that man uh, performed homosexual acts on Lawrence. We're not sure exactly because it's a little bit veiled in his writings, but about? it was somehow in there. So it's, it's a murky picture, ladies and gentlemen. But just keep in mind 
So why did Omar Mateen launch his deadly attack? Well, the answer may be found in some of the teachings that I've said of Islam itself. The answer might be because he was crazy. Uh, so this I haven't seen before because I do often like to feature uh, audio on the show from Crazy Uncle Pat. Uh, but uh, this is uh, an official statement released later in the day by the Christian Broadcasting Network, and it says this. Uh, Dr. Robertson's commentary today about the left, gay, and Muslim communities was clearly referring to politics, killing themselves politically. And the attempt by extreme left-wing bloggers to portray these comments in another context is disingenuous. Oh, of course, yes, he was just... Uh, he was just talking metaphorically, sure. Even though he's talking about an, an, an act, uh, he's talking about an event where people were actually physically murdered. No, come on, we know what he meant. And, uh, you know, I got to look up during the break how old he is. He, he, he's looking pretty rough. I mean, I'm not saying that I hope he dies soon or anything, but I actually want him to, I want him to live to be 100, to be honest with you, because... Um, he does uh, offer uh, material for the show. Um, him and uh, Pastor Manning, Pastor David Manning, who's much, much younger than Pat Robertson, but David Manning, that guy, wow, I could listen to him for, uh, for hours. He goes on, uh, he goes on a, the Alex Jones show quite a bit, and he is really crazy. So crazy, I think he's playing a character, much like I think Trump is playing a character. Or a caricature of himself. I think David Manning is doing the same. Pat Robertson, though, is just old and crazy. We'll be right back. The Real Conscious Connection. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Matt Connerton here. Join Jen Coffey and I twice a week for Matt Connerton Unleash, a political talk show that's a little different than what you're used to. No liberal or conservative agenda here, just an honest dialogue about truth and how things really work in the world of politics. Matt Connerton Unleash, every Tuesday and Thursday night at 11 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio. The name is Bond, James Bond. No, the name is Joe, The Joe Show. And we are returning back for our ninth season here on Old Times Radio. So tune in every Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, on OldTimes.com slash mobile. You can take us wherever you go. Yeah! Have you ever wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free today at AscendingHearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. Getting the blood pump in there in the final segment. Welcome back. Matt Connerton Unleashed as we cruise into our final segment tonight. Don't forget, you can hear us five nights a week on IPM Nation 2 at this very, in this very time slot. And, of course, Tuesdays and Thursday nights, you can also hear us on OTRFM, the premium channel on the Ohm Times Radio Network. Don't forget also the television edition of Unleashed, which is now live Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern. And if you miss the show, fear not, fret not, uh, usually the next day, within 24 hours or less, uh, we have it up on our IPM Nation YouTube channel for you. 
So you can watch it at your leisure or leisure. I like to say leisure. I say leisure if I'm saying like, hey, uh, remember in the 70s when people wore leisure suits? But if I'm saying at your leisure, I say leisure, not leisure. I think leisure in that context sounds more sophisticated. I like to sound sophisticated. But, uh, but you can't say leisure suit. You have to say leisure suit. I think that's actually a rule somewhere. And if it's not, I'm going to write it down and make it a rule. I'm going to write a, a – I, I think that's something I'm going to do. I'm going to grab – after the show, I'm going to grab a pen and paper and just write down a bunch of rules. And that's going to be the number one rule. You can't say leisure suit. You must say leisure suit. You can say at your leisure and not necessarily at your leisure. That you can, you can do whatever you want. But if you're talking about a leisure suit, you have to say leisure. It's only right. You can tell I'm, I'm kind of tired. It's toward the end of the day. Because I get really, really just goofy and silly and strange and say things that make you go, why am I listening to this? But here's the good news. Then you also look at the time and go, oh, it's almost over. I might as well just listen to the rest of it. So just, just, just listen to the rest of it. Hey, that could be my, um, my tagline for the show. You know how lately I've been kind of looking for a tagline for the show? Because some shows have taglines like, you know, the O'Reilly factor, you know, you're now entering the no spin zone or Laura Ingram, your healthy radio addiction. I've never had a tagline for Unleashed. So maybe that could be the tagline. Might as well listen to the rest of it. What do you think? We're going to have to uh, kind of test that one, do some market research, see how, uh, see how people react. Maybe I'll put up a poll. You can all vote on it. Oh, God. So also on rightwingwatch.org, Alex Jones blames the Orlando massacre on the LGBT community. Oh, God. Well, all right. Let's hear what he has to say. This gentleman was uh, openly claiming responsibility, and he had been watched for two years. They knew he was about to do it, but were ordered to stand down, just like San Bernardino. And it took until later in the afternoon, eight, nine hours after everybody gotten up, and, 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 you know, knew about this horror for the media to go, OK, it's Islamic terror. But Obama wouldn't say that. He said it's an attack on us all because an attack on a gay nightclub is just the heart of everything. So, so it's an attack on us all. And, That's and, and not my what issue is I hate any group of people being attacked, period. But now we're going to hear the grandstanding and the LGBT training of the, of the kids in school. And America did this. And this is part of the hate. This guy killed more homosexuals than every gay basher has done in the U.S. the last 50-plus years. I mean, there might be one death a year, and they act like it's the end of the world. Anybody else gets mugged and killed, it's not even in the newspaper hardly. But it becomes this giant cause celeb end of the world. The guy goes and does it, and you want my guns. And you'll use it to say, oh, there's all these crimes against gay people. Let us educate your kids so you would sexualize my children and indoctrinate them into your cult. What? And I'm not saying you're in a cult because you're gay. <laughs> I'm talking about the gay mafia that's really a pedophile mafia in Hollywood and the rest of it that wants access to our kids. What? And I'll tell you, I don't know who's worse, the pedophile mafia or radical Islam. But you know what? Radical Islam, they have sex with little kids anyways. Okay, I've had enough. I, um, I find uh, Alex Jones uh, entertaining, but uh, this is just obnoxious. And, uh, yeah, I don't want to give him any more of my time. Uh, this evening. So we will move on from that, my friends. Uh, let's see. Uh, quick things. So another crazy thing from Trump. Um, Donald Trump calls on Obama to resign over the Orlando shooting. Um, part of it is, uh, without even looking really at the article, without reading in, in it, into it, um, cause I, I discussed this earlier on the television edition too, but this is just part of a larger narrative the Republicans have about Obama. And look, I, you know, uh, it's not like I enjoy spending a lot of time defending Obama. I mean, I voted for him in 2008. I did not vote for him in 2012, but he's been a, a disappointment to me in a lot of ways. 
So, you know, and as an independent, you know, I don't feel any particular uh, obligation to carry anyone's water uh, on, on either side of the aisle. But some of the, the Republican narrative uh, about Obama over the last seven and a half years has been pretty ridiculous. And uh, part of that, of course, has been this sort of subtle or at times not so subtle insinuation that Obama is something a little different about him and that uh, maybe he really is a secret Kenyan-born Muslim terrorist who's trying to destroy America from inside the White House. You know, because and and what and what part of that really is about for some of these people, not all of them, not all of them. I know a lot of good Republicans who I know are not like this, but some of them, I think, I think they're a little freaked out because he just doesn't quite look like other presidents, does he? He looks kind of uh, uh, there's something sort of black about him. So I, I think that that is, uh, is part of what that is. He's, that's why they talk about him like, he's not one of us. He's the other, and the other is scary and sinister and is up to something. So, um, so you know, there's that narrative that he's somehow sympathetic to the terrorists. Uh, part of that is because he doesn't use the phrase... Um, radical Islam, uh, as if the semantics of it matter, which he finally addressed head on, by the way. And I played the uh, video of that today on the uh, television edition of the show. And it was actually a really good moment for him where he addressed it head on and said, look, you know, we have our term for it in the White House. It doesn't matter what you call it. You know, it, it's we all know who the enemy is. We all know who we're fighting. So whether you want to say uh, radical Islam or Muslim fundamentalists or just plain old terrorists or whatever, we all know who the enemy is. We all know who we're fighting, sort of. It gets a little murky at times, but that, that's kind of a side. There's, there's a side issue there, but, you, but you, you get the point. So this this narrative the Republicans have, though, and and then Trump just, of course, goes all in on it. You know, Trump, king of the birthers, um, he goes on uh, Fox and Friends and says, you know, Obama just doesn't get it or he does get it more than any of us are supposed to realize or something like that. I forget his exact words. In other words, implying pretty directly that Obama's in on it, you know, that he's that he's a, a terrorist himself, that he's somehow complicit in this and and he must resign. Uh, we'll go ahead and read this article. This is from HuffPost. Presumptive Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump issued a bombastic call for President Barack Obama to resign on Sunday over the president's response to a shooting at an Orlando nightclub that left 50 people dead and scores of others injured. Uh, Trump said in a statement released by his campaign, quote, In his remarks today, President Obama disgracefully refused to even say the words radical Islam. For that reason alone, he should step down. It's completely absurd. There's no logic to that. If Hillary Clinton, after this attack, still cannot say the two words radical Islam, she should get out of this race for the presidency, unquote. Oh, good. And then there's more. The statement continued, quote, if we do not get tough and smart real fast, we are not going to have a country anymore because our leaders are weak. I said this was going to happen and it is only going to get worse. I am trying to save lives and prevent the next terrorist attack. We cannot afford to be politically correct anymore, unquote. In their remarks on Sunday, both Obama and Clinton referred to the shooting as an act of terror and an act of hate. Obama late uh, last year explained that he refuses to describe the self-proclaimed Islamic State and al-Qaeda as groups fueled by radical Islam because the term grants them a religious legitimacy they don't deserve. Perfectly reasonable. Uh... I have no problem with that at all. And I, I think, you know, trying to take that and imply that it means something else is just absurd. I think the Republicans look absolutely asinine when they do that. And, and Trump, of course, is the biggest ass of the asinine. Um, 
Trump noted in his statement that the gunman, whose name I, I won't even say, was, quote, the son of an immigrant from Afghanistan who openly published his support for the Afghanistani Taliban and even tried to run for president of As- Afghanistan, unquote. According to the Washington Post, uh, the, the uh, shooter's father expressed gratitude toward the Afghan Taliban in videos posted online. His son had reportedly pledged allegiance to ISIS before executing the attack, though officials say there is no evidence he had direct ties to the group. Trump also criticized Clinton, his presumptive Democratic challenger, for wanting to dramatically increase admissions of Syrian refugees into the United States. By the way, has she actually said that? I'm not sure she's really said that. Maybe she did, and I missed it. But uh, Trump said, quote, We need to protect all Americans of all backgrounds and all beliefs from radical Islamic terrorism, which has no place in an open and tolerant society. Radical Islam advocates hate for women, gays, Jews, Christians, and all Americans. I'm going to be a president for all Americans, and I'm going to protect and defend all Americans, unquote. In a follow-up tweet posted later Sunday, Trump reiterated his call for a ban on Muslims entering the United States, even though the Orlando gunman was an American citizen born in New York. He obtained his weapons legally, despite having been investigated by the FBI several times. Trump's campaign said he would be delivering a major speech in New Hampshire on Monday. Oh, that's right. And that was today. And, uh, you know, really... (laughs) I don't know. I, I, I'm going to have to go listen to the speech, and I'll, uh, I'll give you my critique of it tomorrow night on the show. <laughs> I'm sure it was full of insight and very specific strategies that he's laying out in his plans to defeat ISIS. Anyway, we're out of time. Talk at you later. Good night, everybody. <laughs>